Uh, wonderful. We are together again. And I, if you are, this is your first time, we really welcome you to blessings. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo. We are reaching out to you from Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati, Nairobi. And we are sharing the word of God. Remember, our topic is opening to God's favor. And last time we had, uh, this part six now, last time we had a very good uh, message. And I hope you can go and see it. That is part five of this message from Daniel chapter two. Now, we go now to another, uh, the, we continue now to, with this message. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13. Uh, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Uh -huh. And from verse 25. Another parable, 24. Another parable he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, note that word, while men slept, his enemy came and so tells among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tales were also appeared. And um, so the servants of the owner came and said, Now we, we planted the wheat and we have this other crop uh, that is growing with, alongside the wheat. And, and uh, let me say this if you read this story to the end, the enemy came, planted something contrary, something that destroys the wheat, something contrary to what is in the field. And, and one thing I want to tell you is this. If you, want, if you want always to have an opening of God's favor, avoid this issue while men slept. Every person who lives in this world, you know, the Bible says in this passage, when now the, 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 the farmer came back, the worker said, no, we planted the wheat, but you have the tares now uh, among the wheat, and we, we try to remove them, and it's as if they disable the wheat, and if we try to remove them, we will destroy the wheat. And then he says, allow them to grow together until the end. Let's try to get this and apply it to the practical life. And I'd like to note, as note that this part, in, that is Matthew chapter 13, verse 25. While men slept, the enemy came and sowed. The Bible talks about the enemy coming and, and, and planting something very bad. And if you check people, this requires to be awake. Because one of the things that will make us have an opening to God's favor is to avoid this kind of sleep. Because while men slept, this kind of sleep is whereby you sleep and the enemy come. And he has all the time to plant something that will never be uprooted. You have to learn how to live up with it. Most people have this part in their lives. You find that there's a girl. You used to be very active, gifted and talented. But at a certain stage, when you got up to adolescence and you grew up, when you needed to channel your strength and your opportunities and your mind, you channel all your ability to the right way. Instead of bringing together your ability and you channel them to a specific occupation, specific career, specific decision, you did not, that part of you, that 
deserves the right occupation, the right career, the right uh, ethics, that part sleeps. And that's what we are saying while men slept. You find this girl, you ask, how did you get two children with two different men who went away, who ran away? Does it mean you just wanted children? The order is these children should have a father. These children should live a life whereby at least they have, you can explain to them that they were born in the right way, right way, that maybe in future that right way can apply to them. But some of, most of the women and men cannot encourage their children because the circumstances in which you responded to feelings, you became so sexual, so much uh, emotional at the expense of your gift and your mind. Your mind required concentration, but instead of getting concentrated, channeling your mind in a way that it becomes productive, your mind was scattered. You are scattered. And when you are open, you are open to anything. You are not open to a specific thing. You are open to anything. That's what we call while men slept. So you become a drunkard. You become a drug addict. You became addicted to sex. And you never cared about your health and about your, your life and about your destiny. You never cared. You just wanted to be wild and so rebellious. You don't care. That lifestyle is that what we call while men slept. And young people, they, you know, the other day I asked some young people, do you have money? He said, do you not have money? Do you have a certificate? No. But when they walk around, they walk like they have credentials for life. The only thing they have is their big bodies and their ability, physical ability, which cannot, which is not so important. Whenever you go for an interview, it's not your appearance that is interviewed. It's the content of your character. It's the content of your outcome. Place on the table a history of your achievement. Your education achievement. Your work in life. Your, your experience as a responsible, uh, committed, consistent human being. Now, you see, youth are presenting their feelings and their peers. That's all. And then they, you, you, you are done now. They don't have money, but they want to be the best people with the best feeling allowed. So they end up being misused or being trapped in a situation whereby a person or a situation enhances your feelings Use your feelings and never allow your mind to be pro productive. So you, you realize this girl, for about 10 years, your mind never worked. Actually, you blocked your mind and practice your feelings. Sexual feelings. You know, when they tell you, be what you feel. No, no, no. We should not be what you feel. You should be a responsible, rational human being. Even the mind should be contained. The mind should be confined to the right way, right use. You can't just do what you just think. Yeah, your mind should be contained and channeled and confined to the right use. And that's why we need to come around and, and, and ask ourselves, what is happening around us? What is happening around us? You know, we, we, we know a lot of things happening around us. You know, the, there are times I... I was able to interview somebody who ran away uh, from terrorism. And yeah, Bishop ran away. And they said, no, Bishop, the people around, rich people around, are also supplying drugs to terrorists. So that these drugs are supplied to poor young people. And then they are brainwashed. Eh? They become radical in some funny, funny, strange things. But the people who are training them, you don't have their, 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 their youth, their sons and daughters in that thing. 
Somebody raises you for terrorism, but his son is not in that. His daughter is not in that thing. They gather people who are desperate, youth who are desperate. And people who are aroused, some politicians who appear to be good, are making money out of that. They are supplying drugs. They are paid to destroy our sons. While well, the suppliers of drugs, the train of terrorists, they don't have their sons there. And that's why as a church, we need to come out now and sensitize poor people. Tell them now, we want to make, we want to show you how God can show you favor to become rich, to be responsible, and why you should not be misused by rich people who are making money in drugs and selling, you know, modern slavery. Modern slavery is just very bad, very evil. Eh? Uh, some, some is in labor. Some, you know, you are employed somewhere because you are desperate. You work and work and little work. And they pay you very little money. They even deny you the little that you work for. And some force you, you know, have been able to address our young people who have been exported from Kenya to work in circumstances that are really, really, really evil. Slavery. They come back to borrow. They come back to beg. I actually paid school fees for a boy around our church whose mother was working and she came back. This is the money. It's as if the money is cast. You know, when somebody employs you and he has an attitude that you are a slave, even the money that person gives you is not right money. It's, cast. it's like money calling cast. You know, when you are a slave and somebody gives you money, he gives you money that says, I'm giving you this money to show you you have no right. You know, you work for many hours and somebody gives you two dollars. He is telling you, this is money to show you you are nothing and you have no right. No, we can't allow that. And that's why the church should be very, very, very careful and awake about teenagers. Teenagers. And the other day I said to teenager teachers, I don't like the word teenager teacher. Because you just practice teaching. I like the word teenager minister. Minister of teenagers. Apostle. A pastor. An evangelist to teenagers. We, we want five-fold ministry in the youth, not just as a school teacher. We want a, an evangelist to tell children, repent your sins. We want an evangelist to tell the children, stop doing evil. We want an evangelist to tell teenagers, in the name of Jesus, bow to the feet of Christ. Not just a very quiet, moderate teacher who informed them. You know, you inform them about drugs, but they never change. Inform them about the dangers, but you have cap no capacity to cause change. You inform and transform. That is the effectiveness we want. And now we are saying this area where we, we, we term this area as while men slept. We have a stage in life, especially the youth, when you slept. You find a man, I want to say, Bishop, my firstborn. I, I gave birth to my firstborn at the age of 14. She can't even recall whose father is this person. My second one was born in, in, when I was in the age 15. How? I was just moving like a creature with sexual feelings. And things happened. And for, from age 14 to age 20, maybe that day, when he, she got to the age maybe between 25 and 30, that's when she, she got awake and said, no, I've been misused. But now, now, there's, the scars are there. The product of misuse is there. You can't escape it. You can't tell us you have about five children that are born in that life where you are so riotous and don't care about who sleeps with you, who misuses you, and then comes around and tells now, with my five children, I want to assume that um, um, I don't have them. They are there, they are your children, and you grow up with them. While men slept, something was planted that cannot be changed 
you can only learn how to live up with. While, and you find that now things are happening, things are happening, things are happening. While you are raising a family and your two sons are so rebellious, so evil, you can't avoid them. Learn how to live with them. While men slept, the enemy came. And when you come back to check, you say, no, no, you can't remove what was planted. Learn how to live with it. And one thing I would like to tell you is this. Please, from today, by the grace of God, avoid that period that we call while men slept. Because it is spoiling, destroying your chance for favor. Those are the years where God wants to show you favor. Because God is only in heaven where we are not limited to space and time. On earth, even gifts are limited to space and time. You can't have a man of 80 years and the Holy Ghost is telling that man, go and open a big church in Johannesburg. Go and open a big eh, discipleship center eh, in Sydney. It's not possible. Even the Holy Ghost knows you are old. So, we need to understand this. The prime time of your life is the time where Holy Spirit wants to give you talent and gifts because he knows your body is active. If God is to send you, it will involve your legs walking. It involves boarding flights. It will involve active mind. It will involve a lot of creativity. It will involve waking up early and sleeping late. It will involve overworking. It will involve sacrifice. That requires body that is awake and powerful. But that Time when our bodies are powerful, that's when we when men sleep. That's when that girl slept. When she was so strong, that's when she was irresponsible. When that young man was so energetic, that's when they are irresponsible. And now the devil and the new world order want to spoil the youth at that point. I don't know, but the church has a responsibility. To be so active and so prayerful. So active and so prayerful. A program in the church that you never allow this statement that while the church slept, while the pastors slept, while the father and the mother slept. Sometimes you have the mother and the father. You spend about 10 years struggling. No struggle because of luck. No, 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 no. Differences, irritation allowed you that for 10 years you have a lot of misunderstanding, misunderstanding, misunderstanding. The prime time of your marriage, you had what we call while men slept. That's a time your son required discipline. That's a time your daughter required to see habits, formed habits in the family. So when there's no formed habits, in the family that offer clear identity and direction. When young men got to get a teenager, they try to get those identities outside. You know, when your daughter grows with strong habits formed by mother and father, when she grows up, whenever she goes out there, no one, no habit can compare to what they have in the family. But now, you spend 10 years in struggling differences. And the daughter never saw habit to identify it with. And therefore, they grow up. Anybody outside there can get them out of your family. Yes. And they, can tr and they are eager to know, do other people have such issues like we have in our family? You find now you are, you are, you are, you are young man, eh, son, can be controlled, manipulated by any woman around. You know, I always tell mothers, it is the mother who produces strong character in children. And the father is the leader. The father blesses the family. But we need a strong mother to produce strong character. And it helps a lot. It, I've seen that in, uh, in our family. I've seen that elsewhere. But no, women these days are busy out there reacting you can imagine out there you are trying to react against your husband and to react against your family norms. 
Somebody tells you, no, uh, we, 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 you are not a slave to your husband. It's not a matter of being a slave. It's a matter of establishing a system, a relationship that can accommodate flow, flow of things. No slavery. And we, we, we don't want the interference of the new world systems that, you know, in the Bible, the first attack we have in the Bible, the first place where Satan appeared is in marriage. And Satan never comes for unity. He knew if I attack the woman, I have to attack the character of the family. I have to attack the new taste of the family. And Adam will not have anything to do. He will be forced to abide because the woman in the family has some systems. Yeah? And there was a, a weakness around that family. And that's why we are saying, while men slept, do not sleep. Avoid the session of sleeping. We don't want to give enemy a chance to plant things that you never be changed until the end. To plant pain, to put scars, wounds, eh? character, habits, that even if you work so hard for the rest of your life, you have to ha you know how to live with that daughter who rebelled, who became evil. You realize now, you have to learn how to live with the businesses that failed. You have to, have to, read how to live with woods, marriage with woods. Those things, that's what the devil is looking for. But now I'm telling you, work out your life. Stop basing your life on open, being open. That your feelings are just open. Sometimes you find a girl. She has a feeling. And she wants to move with any young man around. Any young man. I've seen that sometimes in the church, there's that girl that you need to run after. Please, sister, stop that. Young girl, stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Sometimes you see that the lady and bishop have aborted seven times. Ten times. No. Funny, funny things that are around our families. Let us now get rid of that session of life. In the youth, in marriage, in single parents, where we say, while men slept, the enemy came and planted something that you disable us, that you led us uh, uh, powerless and not full, not really maximum. You are never maximum because something was planted that never allowed you to be real you and you live with it to the end, knowing for us to experience favor. Let's avoid that part while men slept. God bless you as you overcome that. Thank you.